All right, welcome back. I have the Executive Director, International Organization for Peace Building and Social Justice, Ishaya Inua Dukowa, joining me now for more discussion. Good morning to you, Ishaya. Thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Yeah, good morning. I'm so happy to be here this morning with you in the studio. All right, this is indeed our pleasure to have you. A whole lot has been happening since the announcement of um, the increase in petrol prices since on Tuesday. They have been reactions from various associations, including the TUC, the, uh, the, the, uh, the medical association, the lawyers, uh, even the NOC have all reacted to this. But the recent development is that uh, NNPCL is telling us that um, Dangote um, uh, 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 product will be uh, flooded to the market by September 15, but specifically, it is going to be uh, determined by market forces. Let's get your candid reaction specifically because I know you also are bearing the brunt. Uh, so, what are your what are the feelers you are getting uh, in recent days concerning this price increment in fuel? Well, um, it's, it's a very sad situation for us uh, in this uh, nation, especially in times like this. Uh, knowing that Nigerians have been grappling with uh, economic challenges from uh, rising inflation to unemployment to diminishing purchasing power. And then uh, this recent fuel hike, uh, which is about a thousand naira in the city where I live, as I bought fuel yesterday for my wife, only adds another burden to an already strained economy. Uh, so it's a very difficult season for Nigerians uh, everywhere. And as you know, this uh, petrol hike or price hike has a way of affecting every area of our lives um, as a people. So this is where we are at the minute. In your opinion, now, there seem to be a whole lot of expectations that are actually very rife uh, with the coming on stream with the uh, of um, Dangote um, product, the, the PMS specifically, because he announced uh, you know, that the product will be available within the, uh, the next 48 hours. But Nigerians are actually hoping that over time this issue of fuel scarcity you know, would, would ease very soon with um, this product coming on stream and that uh, maybe the issue of um, pricing might be reviewed. Do you share similar uh, sentiments? Well, uh, the challenge is that hope ought to be active but sadly, ours is always a hope that is characterized by uh, or as a wishful thinking, which never comes to the light of the day. Uh, we were greeted with a lot of excitement, knowing that the refinery, the Dongote refinery is up and doing. But whatever it is that is making that uh, the fuel from the refinery is not coming into the market, uh, just makes the heart sick. Hope defers or deferred make, makes the heart sick. This is where we are at in Nigeria, and we speak too much English. Uh, we have experts talking about expert things, but when it comes to real practical uh, outcomes of the things they are saying, we don't get to see them. So there is something from the back end. Uh, I don't work in the uh, petroleum industry, there is, but, but definitely there is something from the back end that they are shielding from Nigerians, mm. whether it is NNPCL that is not uh, lifting the uh, fuel or whatever the protocol there is, um, we need to deal with it. The bottom line is that Nigerians are not smiling. Nigerians are not happy. Even where there is uh, fuel, uh, you see queues. And uh, so you have to, you are forced to go to black market to go get fuel. So, I do not know what, I don't want to know what is going on from, in that sector. What Nigerians need is uh, petrol and petrol that is affordable. And uh, that is the desire and the aspiration of all Nigerians. So whatever is there, leaders must lead. And to lead is to do the needful, to get fuel out for Nigerians and to get it in a price that is um, affordable. Okay, what can you say as regards uh, the the transparency in um, government in all of this, because um, uh, a school of thought believes that the government is always uh, reactionary when it comes to issues and policies that um, they have um, carried out. And most times they tend not to carry, you know, the average Nigerians along. You know, NNPC have just put out a statement on Tuesday that the, 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 the product 
has increased and they ha they're having some debts and all of that. You know, reactions are trailed. Then the f federal government, that's the vice president, has summoned uh, the minister, summoned the NSA yesterday to a meeting, all in a bid to, you know, forestall um, issues that would, um, you know, occur. The, the minority caucus at the House of um, Representatives also issued a statement condemning the fact that uh, Nigerians are actually groaning. So what does it really tell about our policy formulation and how a transparent um, government has been in terms of, uh, you know, issues that that affect the average Nigerian? I have argued everywhere that policy has never been our problem, but the willpower to see policy uh, being carried out, policies being used in practical reality, that has always been our challenge. All of the policies promulgated in this nation, if we can use a fraction or put a fraction of them into usage, Nigeria is going to be a, a heaven on earth. But sadly, we have these policies, but nothing is coming out of it because of the lack of will from those who are leading us to see that these policies um, have crystallized and become actionable in Nigeria. And when you talk about transparency, what I would say about that is the fact that transparency is a strange word for us as far as governance is concerned in Nigeria. Our leaders have never been transparent, and there has never been a time that they need to own up to it and begin to become transparent with Nigerians and begin to communicate ahead of time rather than being reactionary. So, and I will point, for instance, um, to prove to the fact that transparency has never been in supply for us. Um, on, until Dangote came out to say that they are not giving him crude oil, what was going on behind the scene? He had to protest. He had to come out and speak before an executive order was given for him to get crude oil. That is lack of transparency there. There is something going on behind the scene that an average Nigerian like me doesn't know. And that is a sad reality. But you know, this transparency thing cuts across every sphere of leadership in our nation. And um, until and unless we come to the table of transparency, we may not be able to drive anything in a, in, a, in, a, in a reasonable way. Now, if there is transparency, government would have come out before now to say, here is the X, Y, Z, why petrol is not in market. Now, uh, we are working to solve this problem, and by X date, you are going to have fewer. But they didn't say that until the, it was told, the problem was told. Uh, or whatever the challenge is, was told before we began to hear that uh, 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 oil uh, fuel is not being lifted from the refinery. Uh, Dogote said the fuel is ready, but we are not seeing it in the market. So we need to, our leaders need mm. to look at these issues, uh, transparency and the willpower to see that policies are used to bring about social justice in our land as against just uh, mere rhetorics. Yeah. Uh, we should go beyond this, please. Because right now, the average Nigerian is wondering what is going on. The minister, you know, uh, addressed newsmen yesterday after the summon by the vice president, um, Kashim Shetima, uh, that's um, Lokbobiri, he, uh, Heineken Lokbobiri, and he is saying that the issue is that um, there is a fuel supply. You know, let me just quote him. He said... Um, uh, despite this custody, he's saying that there, there, there's um, um, product availability, despite the fact that uh, Nigerians cannot even find the product, those who can find it are buying at a very ex exorbitant price. Uh, he said that what is important is that the product are available in the country. The minister also assured Nigerians that the scarcity being experienced would be over before the weekend as petrol will be available across the country. He stated that once the product is available, the price would be stabilized. So I don't really get it. I don't know if you do. We have the product, the scarcity, and now the issue of pricing is at the forefront. So he says that fuel is going to be available. He said there the is availability of product. Yeah, so the, the weekend just began. Today is Friday. We've just started. The weekend just began. So let's see if by Sunday what the minister says mm. would come to the limelight. Otherwise, you then know that we are going back to transparency issues. Those who are leading us are not sincere in many ways. I don't, um, I hate to sound strong or to talk with strong words, but if they are hearing 
those who are leading us are not sincere. They are playing with the life of Nigerians. They are throwing Nigerians into a state of anarchy and confusion because everything is being impacted by this lack of uh, fuel, and they need to get up and begin to solve this problem before uh, we face a, uh, a monster that would destroy all of us. Nigerians are not happy. I'm a grassroots yeah. person. And I know people are hungry. We can talk about the implications of this fuel hike. Uh, and chief amongst the, um, the implication is that it increases hunger because poverty oh. is increased. Uh, you know, no purchasing power. Nigerians cannot save. And we can talk about all of these things. And I hope those who are leading us know that there is to the extent that a person can endure hunger uh, because um, is, we are just, the clock is just tickling and we'll get to where we may not be able to contain the situation. So I don't believe them until I see it because they have said it again and again and again. Mm. I don't believe it. And there are many Nigerians like me who don't believe what they are saying. Sometimes it appears as if they are even clueless. But these things are simple. It's just the willpower to demonstrate leadership. Fuel is available, as Ngote has alluded. Mm. If fuel is not available, they would have countered it. And this is science. They can prove it. Go to the refinery and check if his claims are fallacious. Now, if the fuel is there, why is the fuel not in the market? Oh. So that uh, the market forces can stabilize all of these things. So please, they should be sincere. All right. Keep okay. That pressure, and uh, we, we shouldn't be going through this. All right. As we begin to round off this conversation right now, you are an advocate for peace and social justice. You will agree with me there's Ex extreme poverty in the land. Nigerians are complaining. You know, just last month uh, they were on the streets um, across the nation protesting end to bad governance and um, hunger in the land now. So how do you placate the average Nigerian? What would you say to them? In, in as much as uh, you know, the transportation cost has actually gone up way over 400 percent since last year since the removal of fuel subsidy or in even that is still in question as uh, we are told that um, subsidy is still subsidy is still around so how do you how do we placate nigerians the nlc is uh, talking um the tuc is talking the nma is talking the nba is talking so just what can nigerians do yeah nigerians will need to find a way of holding their government to account uh, because there can never be good governance without active participation of the citizens. Now, the how is what all of us as stakeholders need to come to the table to discuss. We have been advocating for peace and social justice, and by that we mean Nigerians should get what is due them without going mm. through untold hardship. Mm. And we've been talking, you can find our names everywhere talking about this reality, but the truth is that um, Nigerians must come to the space where they are beginning to find pretty, uh, uh, ways to hold government to account. When they say there is policy on deregulation, they should be able to hold government to say, show it to us. How is it affecting an average Nigerian? When they say there is fuel available, they should hold government to account for it and say, where is the fuel? We are not seeing it. Um, I mean, so these are the realities. And if we don't begin to do this, we are just heaping coals for the day that it is going to explode. Uh, we have been trying to part, do a parting with many Nigerians as we have them across the nation to tell them, look, uh, violence does not pay, anarchy does not pay, but um, it is a, it's a reality that when a person is hungry, uh, and, and that is the first uh, the hungry of human man. He's need, an angry man. Is an angry man. There is just little you can do to stop that person from uh, from venting out his anger. So these are the realities. And again, right. back to those who need us to consider this matter a very, very critical matter, especially as the nation is beginning to boil. All right, uh, we must say a very big thank you to you, Executive Director, International Organization for Peace Building and Social Justice, Ishaya Inua Dokua, for joining us on Business Insight to look at these issues as regards the fuel scarcity and uh, increase in pump price. Many thanks once again. Thank you so much for having me here, and bye for now.
All right. Yeah. So we just um, hope that, uh, like the minister has said uh, yesterday, that indeed uh, this issue will be sorted out by the weekend, since he is assuring us that there's availability of the product. That's where we join, uh, we'll drop um, the anchor for today. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there. Bye for now.